Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and uh, I was working and check this out. I went to e, e News, and this is why they, I had to make this video. Tracking the fallout and fate of Fukushima Iodine 129 in raining groundwater, dated when? December 21st, 2015, Matt Herod, Geochemistry Underwater and Nuclear. Look what this says. A recently published paper by myself and colleagues from Ottawa and Environment Canada at the University of Ottawa in Canada investigates the environmental fate of the long-lived radioisotope iodine-1291, which, rele which was released by the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident, FDNA. Don't you love the acronyms they're giving it now? Within six days of the FDNA, one 1291 concentrations in Vancouver precipitation increased 5 to 15 times above pre-Fukushima concentrations, then rapidly returned to groundwater. The concentrations of 1291 reached were never remotely close to being dangerous. However, they were sufficient to distinguish the impact of FDNA. Uh, Never really, never remotely close to being dangerous. How do you like that? Never remotely close to being dangerous. So we've got iodine 1291. Why is it not dangerous? Let's look into that. But look, this is where Dana went, you guys. This is why they, the people in Canada, are having a heart attack at what Dana exposed. All up and down here, there is no life. None along these bays, these inlets. There's little pockets, and that's it. Go to Dana Durmford's website, The Nuclear Proctologist. So this is why they're going after him for losing his temper just online, talking and saying words. That's it. What is iodine-129, and where does it come from? It has a half-life of 15.7 million years. It's radioactive and occurs everywhere throughout the environment. It's produced in three ways. The first two are natural, and the third is by the nuclear industry. The nuclear industry, the production in soil and rocks, happens when uranium-238 nucleus spontaneously fissions, and one-half of it releases to mass of 129, iodine-129. That's right. And cosmic ray proton hits an exene on 129 nucleus, removes the nucleus, replacing it and creating iodine-129 nucleus. The anthropogenic production, don't you love these words? That means man-made production, occurs because when uranium fissions in a nuclear reactor, sometimes one of the parts is 1291. Or it's not 1291, it's 129 iodine. I'm sorry. That's an I. This anthropogenic production is by far the largest source in the environment as substantial amounts have been released by nuclear fuel reprocessing. This 129 iodine has been released, can trace a host of environmental processes, and informs us about what happens to 129 iodine or the much, much more dangerous 131 iodine. The current levels of 129 Iodine are much too low to pose health risks to humans or to the environment, but do allow 129 to be used as an environmental tracer. So get this, 131 when it breaks down. So what happens here? How long does it take to become this? Half-life? Lord. I would love to know what these studies are all about. Threat to human health. This is so outrageous. And you know what comes along with this anthropogenic uh, stuff is also a lot. Plutonium, tritium, all the other stuff that kills us. Cesium-137. As a result in rain, shows an increase in iodine-129 concentrations of up to 220 million atoms per liter. This increase was seen more or less 6 to 10 days after the emission from Fukushima began and are 10, 5 to 15 times higher than rain samples collected before Fukushima. Wow. So I am dumbfounded. Look at this. This speaks volumes. Wow. Man-made radiation really anthropogenic these guys the way their language is it's outrageous and i really want to figure out what is the let's see if we can get it here we go days elapsed from march 11th here we go and you see it can you see this february 11th march 11th 
Here we go. Look at this. So outrageous. This is so outrageous that this is all just being, oh, you know, no big deal. It's not really that. It's just a marker to find out where it went. Oh, here's a cute little picture that shows us what happens. Atmospheric transport of iodine-129. You think that's the only isotope that was transported? Huh. From Fukushima, 6 to 10 days. Transported here. Comes down in the rain. Oh, isn't this so clever? Look how they've done these cute little things. And then, for those of us that don't know what the Earth looks like underneath, look. They're giving us this. Partial iodine-129 retardation in soil. Rapid iodine-129 transport via preferential flow in heterogeneous VEDO zone. Lord, water zone. Iodine-129 transport to well screen in subsaturated zone. VEDO's K equals, what's that say? equals more or less zero. I have no idea. This is all science talk, so I got no idea. I know that K means something. I don't know. This is what they count on, us having very limited education in science and comprehension of it. So look what it says. Thanks for reading. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment or send me an email to discuss further. Yeah, further. I think I will send him one and ask him, why does he say that it's not harmful? Wow. Okay, note, 100 million atoms of a liter of iodine-129 is equivalent to an activity of 1.4 times 10 to greater of the minus 7. So it's super, super small, right? 0. 0.00000014. These quantities are extremely low, and only the most sensitive analytical methods in the world can detect them. This amount of radioactivity is several orders of magnitude lower than the natural background radiation produced by naturally occurring radionuclides in the soil and atmosphere. Even a clean rainfall has a one becquerel liter of tritium radioactive hydrogen which remains in the atmospheric which remains from atmospheric weapons testing in the 1960s they love to rely on that and then can you imagine we've piled back on and nobody's actually shocked they're going with the same thing let's see what they say about matt hair this is matt he is a Ph.D. candidate in the Department of Earth Sciences at the University of Ottawa in Ontario, Ottawa, Canada, Ontario, Canada. His research focuses on the geochemistry of iodine and radioactive isotope 129. His work involves characterizing the cycle and sources of 129 iodine in the Canadian Arctic and is applying this to long-term radioactive waste disposal and the effect of Fukushima fallout. His projects include field works in the labs at the Andre E. Lalonde 3 MV AMS Laboratory. So he's a government agent. Matt blogs about any topic in geology that interests him and attempts to make these topics understandable to everyone. Tweets at G.O. Herod. So that's that, you guys. Uh, if you want to contact this guy, um, that tweets. That's his thing. And... Uh, Wow, here's access to the full paper of what it says. I wonder if we can get that. I wonder if we really can get it. Let's see if we can open it up in another window. I'm at eight minutes. I think I'll stop. But boy, this is interesting. This is why they're going after Dana Durnford. Because Dana proved that this statement that there's no harm to human health is completely false. Where there's iodine-129 from Fukushima, there's a boatload of other, a boatload of other isotopes. This is the full paper. Is this the full paper? Continuing full, reading the full article. Let's see if it'll let us do that. This is the abstract introduction. Ooh, maybe they are going to let us see it. Here we go. That's the island. Let's take a cruise groundwater sampling. So they're telling us how they came to this, how they got their results. Here's these maps again. Precipitation stats. So, here we go. They have all these stats that they took. So, I'm going to take a further look at this when I stop the camera. This is pretty interesting. 
Actually, I'm going to look at it later tonight because I got to get back to work. But I saw this article, and honestly, this is why Dana Dernford's being, you know, they're making a, I guess, what, a, they're making a um, an example out of him. And I hope that Dana will beat his charges and they will go easy on him and drop the charges and just tell him you can't yell at anybody online anymore. I mean, it's ridiculous that he has these uh, charges against him. The Canadian government needs to stop just being complete Nazis. I mean, I thought the the United States was bad, man. The Canadians, I don't know. I don't think I want to go to Canada anymore. That's for sure. So anyways, put your courage feet on, you guys. Uh, Dana Durnford, thank you for sticking up for all of us and calling, you know, what do you say? Call, you know, calling it out exactly as it is. I mean, with not mincing words and telling these people that they're rat bastards. Because, uh, you know, Jay Cullen and what's that other guy from Woods Hole? Jay Cullen and, I don't know, I can see his face, but I can't remember his name. I can't stand him. Because they're both liars. They are liars. Look what they're doing to our planet. Convincing this young man that iodine-129 is not harmful. Really? Low level of radiation is harmful. Twisting like a pretzel. Here we go. There, that's what you need to see. Hope it's simple enough for you to understand. It's coming in our water, but don't worry. It's not infiltration, precipitate, in precipitation, and irrigation. But don't worry, it's not harmful. So, put your courage feet on, you guys. Uh, I will talk with you later. Thank you all for joining my radio show, The Age of Fission, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. Call in Friday. We will have the phones fixed. So apologize for that about last Friday. Sorry about that. It is uh, ucy.tv, Age of Vision. The phone number at 8 a.m. is going to be 718-717-8296. That, yes, that's a shameless plug for my radio show. And uh, thanks, Dana. Dana Durnford's actually going to be interviewed by me on March 2nd. So I hope that uh, everybody will listen then. Take care, you guys, and uh, thanks, Dana, for all you do. Ciao.